Awful Sports presents... advantage, of course, still remains with Tommy Hearn. But Ray Leonard and I were talking earlier that he may have the longest reach in ring history. Uh, that 78 inches would be hard to beat. And of course, he is very broad-shouldered, and he uses the reach well. It's been a, a gift that he has had, and he has used that gift well with a very powerful jab. Arthur Mercanti is the referee. The scoring is on the 10-point must system under WBC rules, 12 rounds. The distance... Tony Perez of New York, Eva Shane of Fort Lee, New Jersey, Dickie Cole of Dallas are the judges at ringside. Hutchings in white, champion Hearns in gold. Now will Hearns try to come out and get Hutchings out of there early as he did against Duran? Will he be determined to show that the hit man was back for more than just one bout? I see a mistake already from Fred Hutchings, Tim, and that's that jab, the left jab with Fred Hutchings. He, he brings it back too slowly, and he's dropping that left jab, so look for the right hand, the counter right hand, by Thomas Holmes. Uh, Tim, Hutchings also looks very, very tight right now. If you get nailed when you're tight, Tim, it's going to be tight. And, and Tommy is very, very relaxed in here. Well, I think most of the prognosis uh, was that if uh, Hearn was going to stop Hutchings, he would do it early. And there's a solid left landed by the champion. But that if Hutchings got by the first two or three rounds, it's going to be a very interesting fight, but he's wobbled already. Hearns is after him, and he's got him in trouble. Hutchings trying to survive. And well, he did a good job of escaping there, Ray. But you should hold on and, well, at this point now, should move and clear the head. Because Tom is going to throw it, just barrage of punches once he gets his man hurt. Tim, but Hutchings is reaching for Hearns. He's walking into Hearns. It's the worst thing he can do. Hutchings still wobbling. But now finally getting a clinch around Thomas Hearns. As Ray Leonard suggested, he should have done immediately. But he did escape. The worst damage after the first combination that wobbled it. He's Watch reaching in with that jab, Tim. Watch for the right hand because Tommy Harris should tap, should counter that uh, left jab. Uh, his eyes are a little more clear now. Looks like he's got himself back together, but he is still very much a target. For Hearns, there's a solid left hook landed by the champion. Wide open for a right hand. Hutchins is wide open for a right hand, Tim. He reaches in with that left jab. There it is again. Trained by Noah Cruz, who had the champion Carlos Palomino, who's been with him the last month, under a minute to go. It's the first round with the champion having staggered the challenger Hutchings, but he stayed on his feet. Can we mention that Hutchings' height might bother Hearns? It's the other way around. Hearns' height is bothering Hutchings. Big Hutchings right hand. comes out on a big right hand. Hutchings in difficulty again. Hutchings does not have the experience. He's not been in the fight. Right hand, and right hand. down he goes. First knockdown, a right hand sending Hutchings who was backing up as he was hit. Under 30 seconds to go. Tim, here's where the second phrase at the bell rings so he can get his fighter back to straighten him out. Tommy has to get him out of here. He's got 20 seconds to do it. Hearns pounding away. And with the mouthpiece out, his, his lip is cut now, Tim. He's in bad shape. An overhand right sending Hutchings down for the second time. Tim, there's seven seconds left. He may make it. Five seconds. I don't think so. I don't think he's going to survive this round. And the bell should ring. And there it does. Bell. Here has been through a difficult first round. The air, it's funny because the areas that they figured that uh, Hutch, I mean, Hearns would be uh, susceptible to counter punching, Hutchings has fallen prey to those. Uh, same mistakes. That's right. Hutchings is doing all the leading. He should be patient. There, there he is leading again. Every time he, he leads, he leans in. He has a world title bout, no doubt. It's affected the start of uh, the performance by Hutchings today. Tim, it's an amazing thing. In the gym, all he was doing was waiting and fainting and looking to count the punch. As soon as the fight starts, he forgot everything he worked on in the gym. Well, he, the Hutchins also is straight up, but also he's given away a couple of inches. Well, inches so in height because he's still down. There he reached in again. Tom at this point is going to kick his shot. Big left hook. 
He's nice and relaxed, friends. And the left hook has been a very effective form by Thomas Hearns. Hutchings again is still looks on very unsteady leg. Yeah. Round two scheduled for 12. He's just a matter of time because Tom has the experience. He knows exactly what to do when his man is hurt. He's not rushing himself, which uh, we had questioned as far as the overconfidence was concerned. He's taking his time, picking his shot, and waiting for an open where that he can put some combinations together and get Hutchings in our way. Hutchings has been unable to reach her so far. That's right, Tim. If Hutchings can land a punch or two, maybe Tommy will have a little respect for him. But right now, it's all Tommy's own way. Get his luck from the nose of Hutchings. Second round, scheduled for 12, and it was nearly over in round one with a pair of knockdowns by the champion Hearns. Now Hutchings is bleeding from the nose, Tim. Getting a little closer to Hearns, though. Landed a couple of jabs. Hutchings has a good solid jab and a very tough left hook, and he's been unable to get near the champion. Here's a right hand, landed by Hearns. Hutchings punching back. Under a minute to go in round two. Oh, and another big right hand. And another one by Hearns. Hutchings in difficulty again. What's doing the most, what has done the most damage has been the left hook thrown by Tommy Zorn. Hutchings, his game though, Tim, he's winging back, he's missing, but he's winging back. See, he keeps reaching in, he keeps leading. He's got to get himself together. Over the 30 second mark we go. Round number two. Skills, he describes that Hutchings has just not been demonstrated here because he was hurt in round number one and is still just trying to get himself regrouped so we haven't seen anything of what he can really do. The champion in command as we wind down round number two and Hutchings is going to get through this one as well. And he lands a right hand. Round number three, the champion Thomas Hearn. Challenger in all kinds of difficulty in the first two rounds. Two knockdowns in round one. Hutchings managed to stay up to round two, but has been unable to get close to the champion who's been in control totally. Tim, Tim, when you get nailed early like that, that's the same as a sprinter in the 100-yard dash falling down at the starting line. It's tough to get back once you get a bad start like that. For the Red Energy line, we are live from Saginaw, Michigan on CBS Sports Saturday. Tommy's left jab, Tim, has been very tough. He's very consistent. In fact, there's a slight swelling on the left eye of uh, Freddie Hutchinson. Hutchinson. And uh, he's, also, he's not stable. Well, his conditioning certainly uh, has enabled him to go this far because he was really banged around in round one and again in round two. And here he is still trying to regroup, regather, get back to his fight plan. It's basically a counter-punching fight plan. Tim, he has a great friend in Manoa Cruz. He's a great condition. I knew the fighter would be in great condition for the fight. All of his friends in Stockton, California, looking in, no doubt, with some concern at this point. He's a little more settled down now, though, Tim. He's not reaching as much. He thinks he has to initiate the action all the time, and he doesn't. Tommy now is going to work his jab downstairs and upstairs, which I feel he's going to come over with the right hand. There he tries to throw the right hand. He's trying to set his man up. Fred Hutchings, 27 and 1, 17 knockouts, turns 39 and 1 with 33 KOs. The entire family here in the tennis at ringside. Mom, brother Steve, who just won a gold medal in the Olympics. Another brother, a grandfather, four sisters, and a third of other relatives. A right hand, a counter right hand by Tom would be so beautiful to him because Freddie Hutchings, he's in position to be hit by that uh, right hand. You know the next jab is he picks it out and drops it. And a minute to go, or at least he landed that left jab on his last try. Turns with a reach advantage, Hutchings with a one-inch height advantage. Tim, they're the same weight, but Tommy Hearns looks twice as big on his right hand. That was a right hand on the right hand by Tommy Hearns. Of course, Hutchings reaches in with that left jab and steps forward with that left foot and doesn't follow back. Tommy Hearns some fun in there now and he hurt him with another right hand lead that time and Hutchings again 
doing the right thing after being stunned. And now the, the one of the handlers up on the corner looked like he was trying to stop the fight from the Hutchings corner. There's a right hand by Hearn and a combination. Hutchings won't go down. A handler stepping into the ring from the Hutchings corner, trying to get the referee to stop the fight. And Mercanti does. Hutchings handler, I believe that's Benny Casey, stepped into the ring during the action, trying to get the referee to stop it. And Mercanti, the referee, has stopped the fight man was back after Roberto Duran's second round knockout and it seemed like uh, you wanted to do the same thing here today were you trying to convince yourself or just everybody watching well, see, I was trying to uh, get the man out of here I know I had the ability to do so so I wanted to put the pressure on him I knew that the, the first round was gonna be more like a fill-out round and then after that I knew that I would be able to go in and work from there after I was able to get a fill out I felt like the second round I wanted to Go in and put, add more pressure and start using more shots, putting shots together. There was no doubt that uh, had he been able to get through the first couple of rounds, the fight could have been different because he's a very skilled boxer, but you never gave him a chance to get started. I understand that he's a very skill, skillful boxer. My plan was to just use my, my punching power, my ability to box as well as my punching power, and put that in a combination of all together. And I knew that he would have a lot of power because I felt like I was a lot stronger than Fred was at the time. Well, you sure were. Let's go back at the uh, the handler case. He wanted to prevent uh, Hutchings from any further punishment. Well, we've already heard that uh, that Mugabe and Moore maybe are in your plans at 154, but I know that in everybody's mind, Marvin Hagler is the man. He's probably watching here today. What, what's, what's your thought? I know Marvin Hagler is watching. I know he's watching. He's sitting back. He's just thinking now. <laughs> I mean, he's having a very hard time to even think now. It's constantly bothering day in, day out. It's just a problem, it's just a cause a big problem for Marvin Hagler. He knows that his time is coming next, and the hitman will get him just like he got everybody else. You're a true champion. You were really ready for this fight. You didn't take him for granted, and you did the job. Congratulations. Tommy Hearns, WBC state champion, defending his crown for the second time. Good evening, folks, and a hearty welcome to our drive-in theater. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you, one that will provide several hours of pleasurable relaxation and diversion for you and your family. Did you fail to dress up for tonight's show? No tie, an old shirt and slacks, a house dress? Well, don't give it a thought. We're glad you came as you are. We just want you to enjoy yourselves. Don't forget to visit our refreshment center during the intermission or any time. You love the tasty array of snacks we have to offer. So will the youngsters. Everything is quality and mm -hmm, so good. We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family. Bring your friends. There are always wonderful new pictures to see, delightful snacks to nibble, a gay, pleasant evening for all. Oh, a word of caution. Don't drive over 10 miles an hour in the theater area for your safety's sake. And mom or pop, Go with the kids when they leave the car. We hope you have a wonderful time. Come back soon. It's intermission time, folks. And that means it's time for a tasty snack. How about a stroll over to the refreshment counter for a delicious bite to eat? You don't have to worry about missing any part of the show because our announcer will let you know three minutes before the show starts again. See you over at the refreshment counter. Hi, I'm Chili Dilly, the personality pickle. Packed in a jar for the freshest flavor. Served cold in a sack for you to savor. So dainty to eat, no muss, no fuss. An ideal snack for all of us. Crisp, tender, and tasty with a bit of spice. Buy one now. Taste how nice. Snack bar clerks will knock themselves silly. Speeding your order for a real Chili Dilly.
love to be able to pin Hearns on the ropes if he can. A more aggressive start by Hagler. Look at him, right for the body. Marvin Hagler only wants the body. He bangs Marvin. Oh, Hearns with oh, the right hand. Hearns oh, to the right. Hearns hits him with an uppercut. Hagler, he's hurt. Hurt. Hagler. Hagler is done. Hearns got inside. Hit him with a right uppercut. Marvin ties him up. Marvin Hagler is still hurt. So is Hagler coming out like a bullet. A good left by Hagler. But Hearns didn't flinch. Pursuing, comes in with the right, missing with the left hook. Here's where I believe Hagler should turn to righty. He could block that right hand easier and he would land his own left hook. Hearns with a devastating punch. Swelling near Hagler's left eye again. Tommy trying to come inside the hands of Hagler. Low blow by Hearns. Hagler's still looking for the body. A right by Hagler. Good right got in. Where he'd love to keep on the ropes, but Tommy comes off oh. easily. Another good right by Hearn. Hagler is now shaking those right hands off, though, Al. He was stung a little early, and he's normally a slow starter. He's also bleeding. Hagler is cut. Hagler is cut. Bridge of the nose. Hagler hitting him low. He is banging the body well. He is taking shots to the head. He blocks that right. Hearn tries to come in with the uppercut. And Hagler ties him up with a minute to go in a wild first round. Working inside now up top, half a minute to go in round two. Oh. 
Got to cut a band. against marvelous Marvin Hagler. Schuler, though he was the number one ranked middleweight of the time and the NABF champion, was very unknown. He was a tall, lanky boxer from Philadelphia who, as you've seen, uh, beat James Kinchin in a very important win for him. But against uh, Jerry Holly and about on ESPN just before this matchup, a couple of weaknesses had been exposed. One was that he could be hit by the right hand, and of course that would be something that would be a problem for him against Thomas Hearns. So when we return, we will go back to Caesars Palace in Las Vegas to take a look at Tommy Hearns and James Schuler, and I'll be joined at ringside by Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy. The North American Boxing Federation at ringside, the president of that organization and a member of the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Mr. Sammy Macias. Your referee is Richard Steele. Introducing, in the blue corner, the challenger, Fighting out of Detroit, Michigan, weighing in at 160 pounds. His professional record consists of 40 wins, two defeats, with 34 KOs. He is the WBA Super Welterweight Champion of the World, Thomas the Hitman Hearn. And in the red corner, fighting out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 
He too weighs 160 pounds. He is undefeated in his professional career with 22 wins, 16 KOs. The NABF middleweight champion, James Schuller. There is James Schuler, 22 and 0, 16 knockouts. Tommy Hearns, 40 and 2 with losses only to Sugar Ray Leonard and marvelous Marvin Hagler. And you can see there are two tall guys. Now Hearns is, I guess, in every fight that okay, I can recall, at least had that height advantage. And here he is looking somebody in the I eye for a change. Now, so that'll be kind of interesting. Although in this picture, he it's looks a little taller than James Schuler. Yes, Maybe he's got elevated he heels on. <laughs> well, no, they probably taught Schuler to bend his knees. <laughs> All right, Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy and Al Bernstein from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada. It, you know, Gil, I just, I just feel so much better having heard that announcement from Chuck Hull. It would have been a wait for everybody here uh, through the remainder of the evening, and, and that would take some of the luster off these two fights to follow, and we do promise a later medical report on Richie Sanders. Tim, especially you and I know the kid so well, and he's such a great kid. Delightful young man. All right, we're underway. Both in gold trunks, black gold has the black stripe. Tommy Hearns with a new short haircut, taking a little weight off the top of his head. A little less protection, Tim. <laughs> That's right. There's that piston-like jab of Hearns. And Schuler has an excellent jab as well. Tim, you have two well-schooled fighters here. They were two of our best amateurs in the, probably in the last 10 years. You're going to see a good technical bout. Solid shots to the body by Thomas Hearns. But Schuler stayed right there with him. Left hook back from Schuler. Another ripping left hook to the body. And a right. That moved Schuler backwards. Not a straight on, right by Hearn. Not only moved him backwards, Tim, but bobbled him. And there he goes. Another one. A right hand by Hearn. He will not get up. Well, now we know that Tommy Hurts can hit middleweights and knock them out. And boy, did he knock them out. Tommy Hurts in the first round. Tim, he, he came into this fight at a full 160 pounds. Look at those back muscles on Tommy Hurts. He looks like a light heavyweight. Thomas Hearns at 113 of the first round with a knockout of James Black Gold Shooter. Now let's go back and see the knockout. There's the right hand. That hurt him. There's the left of the body. He was already wobbling, as you pointed out, Gil. And there's that overhand right. Little short chopping shot that perfectly aimed and delivered. Tim, right on the button. Watch where this right hand lands. Right on the button. That says, lights out, Ryan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the time. One minute, 13 seconds of the first round. The winner by a knockout and new NABF middleweight champion from Detroit, Michigan, Thomas the Hitman Hearn. Tommy Hearns, and he's in the ring now with our Al Bernstein. You came out throwing left hooks to the body. Was that designed to get his hands even lower? My plan was to come out to box James and start working on his body to use the body attack because I noticed in his fight with James Kitchen, he didn't like the body shot too well. So my, my strategy was to box him and use the body shots too. But here I felt great. My legs were very strong, and I felt that I was able to execute at any time, I felt like it. Yep. I felt like going out there and letting off, I had the power to do so. Congratulations to Thomas Hearns. Let's go back to Gil and Tim at ringside. All right, Al. We're told that Al Bernstein is standing by with a guest over in our celebrity section. Yes, indeed. Tom Selleck is here with me, and Tom had a problem. He's got a cup of coffee with him. He went to get that cup of coffee, and what happened, Tom? Well, <laughs> the fight happened. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I was a about 10 seconds from turning the corner to get back in, and I heard a yell, and I looked around the corner, and Hearns had his hands up like this, and I guess he won. Is that what happened? Yeah, I can tell. And now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. 
please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.